Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Let's have a conversation about racism. The left seems to view everything through the prism of race. Race this, racial that, identity this, identity that. But when it really comes down to it, why is it that the most despicable characterizations, the most despicable racial judgments, always come from the left? You know, I actually don't spend very much time thinking about the color of people's skins in general or identity groups. I kind of don't really care. It's not really something that my mind goes to. And I think that's a pretty healthy thing. You know, on the House floor last week, Matt Gates and crew nominated Byron Daniels as a potential House Speaker in their opposition to Kevin McCarthy. And I remember my reaction exactly. That's a pretty good choice. I like Byron Daniels. Man is highly competent. He's coherent. He's a strong leader. He's just a good guy and all around seemingly good man. Why is it that that's my reaction. I didn't even think about the color of his skin, like it didn't even come into the process, my thought process at all. But leftoids, it seems to be all they think about. It's the only thing that they see. When they look at a person, they don't see human being. They see gender A, B, C, X, Y, Z, the list goes on. Color of skin, pigmentation, variation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I mean, it, you know what I'm getting at. They view everyone within an identity group rather than individual. Individual. And it ends up coming off so incredibly condescending, patronizing, and racist. And here's a great example. The left's treatment of Byron Donalds has just been egregious. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so take a look at this. Watch Byron Daniels slams Joanne Reed for accusing him of being a diversity statement for the GOP. Because you got into it back and forth with a fellow congresswoman who was critical of the nomination because it definitely looked like they were looking for a response to Hakeem Jeffries in you. Uh, no, that was not any. Because you've literally any. been there for one term, so you okay. you do I mean, not. You you've never to, been in leadership. I'm asking to, you the question. On, I'm, I'm so answering. That's what, Am I and the reason I'm asking that, I'm okay, just going to ask you this All question, right, is one of the things that not, I don't know that you said it, but members have said is that they wanted to highlight the diversity of the conference. There are four African American members in the House Caucus, the Republican Caucus. Mm -hmm. There are 56 members in the Democratic Caucus. So just it's more diverse. There are more African-American members just that are House Committee ranking members. They're at the, the same number that are actually members of the entire Republican House Caucus. Right. So do you not believe that the idea was to make a diversity statement by nominating it? Well, actually, first, that was not the idea because I was in a room when the decision was made by people who chose to nominate me. That never came up. And you you have still on. not explained I, how, you, how you were I'm qualified. You've never been your, in leadership. Are you going to let me answer your question? Sure, or you tell us. Over me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, now let's go back. The reality is, is that a lot of members actually do believe in my ability to lead. They do. Am I to be despised for my youth because I've served one term? My members know that I have the ability to engage other members through the conference, but it's even bigger than that. Listen, we were at an impasse last week in our, in our speakership elections. We got that done. Kevin McCarthy is now Speaker of the mm -hmm. House. At the same time, I was working with members on both sides of our conference to make sure that we can get the job done, and we did. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that matters. Now, how incredibly insulting was that first statement? People thought that you were just being nominated as a response to Hakeem Jeffries. What? What does that even mean? Mean. First of all, the idea that Hakeem Jeffries needs a response I think is laughable. The guy, in my opinion, is a complete joke, totally incoherent and incompetent. But the idea that Byron Donalds was picked just as a diversity response to Hakeem Jeffries has to be the most Democrat thought process I've ever witnessed in my life. This is how these people think. They're essentially claiming that Matt Gates and crew picked Byron Donalds as a potential House Speaker purely because of diversity, because of the color of his skin to be a token black man of the Republican Party representing the GOP on the House floor. How utterly ridiculous and better than that, how totally ironic. Because that's exactly what Democrats do. You're accusing Republicans of doing what you literally did with Hakeem Jeffries, what your party does with people of color, promoting them to positions of power as diversity virtue signals. The same thing with Kentanji Brown Jackson. The same thing with Kamala Harris. You seem to have absolutely no issue with the tokenization of Democrats based on the color of their skin, but apparently when a black man in the Republican Party gets nominated to a position of power or a position of leadership, well, he's just a token for the GOP. You people are nuts. 
Like, actually insane. Byron Donalds was picked for one reason and one reason alone. The man is sharp like a tack. And also happens to be a complete beast. You know, it's moments like these. Are you worried about retribution after the fact? There was threats that folks that weren't going to vote for McCarthy would be kicked off committees. Now you've put yourself in a, in a pretty public position opposing who, the person that could be the speaker. Are you worried about retribution? Man, I'm 6'2", 275. I'm not worried about that. To make you love Byron Donalds. The guy doesn't play games. Could you think maybe for a second that Byron Donalds was picked because people like him? Because people trust him? Because he's competent? Because he's coherent? Consistent with his messaging? Not constantly flip-flopping and playing some political game? No, of course not. A Democrat could never think that way because they reduce everyone into their identity groups. They reduce everyone into whatever the superficial nature of what they can see on the exterior is rather than who the actual individual is. It's what you are rather than who you are that's the democrat mentality and they struggle to comprehend anything beyond that that's why we see these constant vicious attacks and these claims of tokenization oh you're just a token black man for the white man an uncle tom the token black man for the gop joanne reed made her checkmate argument oh well, there's only four black republican house members or black republican caucus members i forget exactly what she said i don't know the numbers off the top of my head and then she claims that there's 64 for Democrats. Yeah, well, that ratio seems to align itself perfectly with voting trends and voting patterns. Yeah, no S. You figured out the mystery, Sherlock. Great argument. There's more African-American Democrats than there are Republicans. Wow. You unlock the mystery that black Americans vote for Democrats at a 9 to 1 ratio. Honestly, a figure that continues to baffle the mind. I really just don't get it, especially with all the labeling and all the hatred. I mean, Joy Ann Reed's not the first to make the argument that she's trying to make here. How Speaker race Byron Donalds responds after Cori Bush says his being black makes him a, quote, prop. Here's the tweet. Byron Donalds. Donalds is not a historic candidate for speaker, he is a prop. Despite being black, he supports a policy agenda intent on upholding and perpetuating white supremacy. His name being in the mix is not progress, it's pathetic. But what I truly find pathetic are these statements. So filled with hate and animosity. And I also find it very ironic that someone like Cori Bush is essentially calling Byron Donald stupid, because we all know Cori Bush is the epitome of intelligence. She's essentially accusing Byron Donalds of not knowing any better and supporting an agenda that upholds and perpetuates white supremacy unknowingly as a prop, or she's suggesting that he's so incredibly corrupt, morally corrupt, that he would do it anyways for his own benefit, essentially calling him an Uncle Tom. It's emotionally targeted propaganda. It's garbage. It's hateful, demeaning, and it's nothing but lies. This is what Democrats do. And this is somehow how they hold on to minority votes, and that's really what baffles me. The constant fear-mongering and gaslighting. Actually, we were speaking about Hakeem Jeffries earlier here's a great example but republicans have begun to implement what we suspected would be an extreme maga republican right-wing agenda apparently rescinding joe biden's 87,000 new irs agents is extreme you know, protecting the middle class from IRS tax harassment. I guess that's extreme GOP white supremacy at work. Holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable or requiring life-saving care for babies born after botched abortions is the extreme MAGA Republican right-wing agenda. Investigating abuse of power and political corruption involving the President of the United States. You know, the same thing that Democrats complained about being the number one biggest issue in America for four years under Donald Trump's presidency. Somehow that's extreme. It's the extreme MAGA Republican right-wing agenda. It's nothing but a bunch of garbage, slanderous terms, isms, labels. In other words, the Democrat modus operandi. They view everything within boxes, within columns, within categories. You're this or you're that. You're with them or you're a Nazi. You're with them or you're a race traitor. You're with them or you're extreme. The only thing that's extreme are these Democrat tactics. These hateful, slanderous, demeaning, condescending, patronizing tactics that we see from these leftoids. I mean, the friggin' gall, the audacity to look a man in the face and not question what he believes, not have an honest conversation, not even be intellectually curious as to who he is and what he represents and what he stands for, but to look at him dead in the eyes and claim, you're just a prop. You ain't black. To reduce someone 
to the most superficial elements of their identity, to look at someone not by the content of their character, but purely by the color of their skin, and to claim that you're the progressive woke side is just baffling to me. It makes no sense, and I don't understand how particular cultural institutions continue to stand by this nonsense. It is absurd. These Democrats don't care about what they preach. They merely use these tactics to gain and to hold on to power. Actually, right off the top of my head, here's a great example. Democrats are always going on about slavery, human rights, the oppression of black folks. And they're also always going on about the environment and how we need to move to electric cars. Well, when's the last time you heard Democrats condemning the actual slavery and horrid conditions of African workers in the Congo working tirelessly in pits, mining the cobalt that is used in those electric vehicles? There's this viral moment from Joe Rogan's podcast the other week. Uh, before anybody knew what was happening, Chinese government, Chinese mining companies took control of almost all the big mines, um, and the local population has been displaced, uh, is under duress, and they dig in absolutely subhuman, gut-wrenching conditions for a dollar a day, feeding cobalt up the supply chain into all the phones, all the tablets, and especially electric cars. This is the bottom of the supply chain of your iPhone, of your Tesla, of your Samsung. I mean, I'm just naming those companies. Right. Uh, it's all of them, right? All of them. This is an industrial cobalt mine where there's not supposed to be one artisanal miner. Now, that's the term used for people who are just digging by hand as opposed to tractors and excavators. And it's yet again another example of leftist hypocrisy. They don't actually want to have a conversation about slavery because slavery is still happening. And in many cases, Middle Eastern royalty or the Chinese Communist Party is behind the slavery that we see in the Middle East and in Africa. Where are the leftoids condemning that, which is at the core of our supply chains and all of the products that they love, their MacBook computers and their fancy electric cars. They're nowhere to be seen on the actual important issues, supposedly issues that they're constantly talking about and virtue signaling about, they're silent. But when a black man of character like Byron Donalds, they're more focused on demeaning remarks and character assassination Fascination, targeting a black independent thinker, Byron Donalds, slandering him because he holds different viewpoints than they do. Absolutely despicable. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel if you guys are up for it. I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.